Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Wednesday catch-up video. For quite some time now, I've been wanting a steam boiler to run my steam engines in the garden just for my own use and possibly to take the steam rallies at a later date. Um, I've looked at a few, I've actually bought one, the results haven't been quite what I wanted. Some time ago, I did start to build a one. This is the actual boiler shell, this bit of, I think it's 7 inch copper tube and I flanged the end plate, that's as far as I got. So tonight I'm going to reshow the video of me flanging the copper end plates for this boiler and I'm going to make a start cutting tubes. I've decided to make it a vertical boiler. It'll be coal fired as well as gas fired, possibly even kerosene fired. I want to make it quite versatile. It'll be quite a high pressure affair. I'm aiming for like 100 psi working pressure. So it'll have to be tested to work a hydraulic pressure of at least one and a half times that. It's really thick stuff, it's four mil wall. Uh, so I'll be boiler fittings to make water gauges, clack valves, uh, quite a lot of work involved in it. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it. Um, I would like to TIG weld it, that I can't TIG weld copper, but I haven't got any qualifications for TIG welding copper, and if I wanted to get the boiler insured, it wouldn't work. So I'm gonna get in touch with our local Model Engineering Society and have a word with their boiler man and um, silver solar it and do like a video of it if it being made uh, so hopefully we can get it all tested and insured. So that's what we're going to look at a rerun of a video flanging copper tubes. <laughs> I'm going to join this together uh, by brazen. Brazen is brass as opposed to silver, so that it's a lot cheaper and it's also a stronger joint. I want a good fillet of brazen around there. I've mechanically cleaned it so it is clean. The rods I want to use are what's called a detective brazen rod. The pink stuff's flux, these are really good quality brazen rod. A nice fillet of brass around there. The heat source is going to be oxypropane. will melt off the rod Copper is actually taking more heat than I thought The bronze, the back is going to the hottest part which is the minutes of steel there was forming a nice, a nice first joint all the way around. For a piece of decent sized copper pipe for quite some time to build a boiler so I can run my steam engines. I know it won't run them on full power but at least I can run them in the garden. This is six inch copper tube, real heavy wall stuff and it's 18 inches long so it's going to be the basis for the boiler and it's going to be a fire tube boiler, coal fired as well as gas fired. A friend of mine giving us a, a bronze foundation ring to go on the bottom so I need to cut some end caps or some end plates and flange them. Uh, I'm going to use all flange joints and silver so that I had thought about TIG welding this because I can TIG weld copper no problem but I haven't got any qualifications for TIG welding copper 
and silver solder is seemingly a lot safer or it's a lot anyway that silver solder is the way I'm going to go Bastard thing. Nasty. They're red hot and are really sharp and cut your ribbons. Horrible bastard things. Cut now. Put a nice round edge on here now. Kind of two to do that. That's not too bad, that. Or a bit of plasma cut steel plate. I found a piece of sharpened tool steel that should probably do the job for us. We'll try it nice and seal it first. We just want a nice radius on there to the copper, then ground it nicely. Nearly there. Before I take out the truck, I'm going to try the boiler tube on there just to make sure that there is enough clearance. Okay, so we need 6mm clearance in there because the boiler tube plate was 3mm. I'm going to cut two strips of copper, put them in just to make sure we have got enough, but that certainly looks about 6mm to me. Right, so that's the stuff we're using for the end plate, 3mm copper and they fit in there quite nicely two of them so we've got a 3mm gap all the way around Ugh. to soften or a needle of copper you heat it up to a cherry red colour let it cool, you can quench it in water to make a difference quench it in water cleans it but it doesn't affect the 
we had softened it. This is oxypropion. Once you get the flame stabilised, it's not too bad. We'll get the stick to the nozzle. And this is a proper jet for well for using propane. Come on, you scabby bastard. Right, once you've got the three of them, you can crank the pressure up. Should be enough heat in this if not, I've got a fucking force in here. Right, let's run two fire bricks. Half one fire brick, it's more than half of these. Should get enough heat in this. Turn the light out there to see the colour change. We will fork in the flame now. Until it comes back later after it's been in the, in the water. You can use a weak sulfuric acid solution and that pickles it, that really cleans it. That's what we'll be doing before we come to solder it all together. Same treatment for the other one. These are the copper end plates that were cut and annealed or softened. And the idea is to form these around that edge to make a flange to fit inside the boiler shell. So that gets centralised in there, gripped in the vase, and we centralise it. We're using the famous eyeball and finger method here. And that does look pretty good. The copper is nice and soft, but as you work it round, it work hardens, then it has to be softened again. I'm not sure how much, how many times I need to heat this and soften it. I'm using the cage side of a hammer just to gently tap it around. You can see how nice and soft the copper is, but it does quickly become work hardened. I do think there's a limit to the amount of times you can soften copper. Feel how it's starting, starting to stiffen up. These are standing on top of some fire bricks, so we'll get some heat into them and then quench them in water just to clean them and then carry on flanging them.
this is the the fourth time they've been softened now. It's really starting to take the shape of the format. Just stretching and moving the metal. I've never done this before, I've just watched videos of people doing it. I think this will be the last time now I'm using a steel planching hammer. and they are and they fit in there small gap all the way around not much um, so we're going to put in the lid now and just throw them up I'm very really pleased with that for the first attempt at planting plates I've put the former that we made it on back in the lid and I've got a piece of plastic here. So it's just going to help to hold it on and actually drive it to take a friction drive. And all I want to do is throw this back edge here, just take a leg cut off. It's horrible stuff to machine cop as it always has been. Um, WD40 does help. I heard that milk helps as well. But I don't want to play stinking the sour milk, so we'll try the WD40. Once again, it's just time to see it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, as usual, a massive thanks for all the well wishes and uh, kind words that are coming in um, regarding basically my mental health. Uh, I am a hell of a lot better than I was now. Um, mainly a party jewel, I suppose, to meds, um, your wife getting help, friends, uh, the lads at work have looked after us. It has made a massive difference. It's not easy to talk about mental health. A lot of lads can't talk about the mental health. There's like a, a stigma about it. And sadly, some people just don't get the help they need and it ends up in tragic consequences. So please talk about it. If me saying this makes just one person get help, and I know for a fact it's made a lot more than one person get help, it's all been worthwhile. Anyway, thanks for watching.